there's such beautiful lighting and cinematography in between us. And I especially love the opening scenes that you have Mm -hmm. um, around, is it Nebraska? Yeah, in Nebraska. Mm -hmm. So what were your production days like? Um, What kind of camera were you shooting with? And how many people were on your crew? Um, We had, uh, well, first of all, we had a wonderful cinematographer, Nancy Schreiber, ASC. And uh, she kicks ASC. It's, it's funnier on paper, you know? uh, but she's great. I, got it. I mean, she, you know, uh, and her background is, is really uh, on the gaffing side. So she likes her lights. She made the joke the, just the other day. I wish she'd told me this when we started. She, she, people say, oh, Nancy, do you, do you, can you use uh, available light? And she says, yeah, any light available she'll use, you know. And I was like, oh, that explains it. It's good. Um, Cinematographer yeah. with a sense of humor. Oh, That's yeah, helpful. yeah. And I mean, I always say like, you know, I mean, this is true with any crew member, but especially with your cinematographer. You know, there can be some great cinematographers who are real pains in the ass to work with. And then there are really nice people who maybe not be so good, but at least you can talk to them and work through it. Nan- Nancy was, was great at everything. You know, I mean, I, I got along wonderfully well with her. We were a real team, you know, to this day, still are. And, um, and she just got amazing, beautiful imagery um, out of it. Uh, and... She was teaching at AFI at the time, so she had a lot of her students come and work on the film, and it was a great opportunity for them. Um, but we had different camera operators every day. We had a couple guys, uh, Colby Oliver, one guy in particular, one of her students was on pretty much most of the shoot, but the second operator was different every time because we were shooting two cameras, two reds, and we actually had a third red as a backup, which came from our investors in Nebraska who are farmers, but they had their own red camera. Cause crop circles or yeah there you go oh, okay. yeah and um well they have a nephew who's a filmmaker so oh, I but see. they own the camera anyway so we had that as a backup you know because these things go down so we would use the body for at different times um but uh so nancy and i would be at the two monitors and and then have two different operators and she was very good at sort of managing how they would go so they weren't shooting into each other down the barrel of each other uh, which was, I was very impressed with. You know, so we always had great usable footage from both cameras. Um, but I think the you know the challenge because you know no matter how good things are, there are always challenges. Was you know it took a long time to light. You know because it was largely an inexperienced crew, and Nancy likes her lights, and there were a lot of them. Um, so it took us a few days to kind of find a rhythm where we could, where I think Nancy and I together realized you know. The, Big lighting changes were going to take a long time. We didn't want them to, but they did. Um, and that was frustrating for the actors, frustrating for me as a director, um, and it slowed down our days. Um, but what didn't take a long time were camera changes. So a, a change of a dolly move or um, you know, a change of a, you know, if you're using a zoom, you just zoom in and you get a whole different, you, know, you go from two shot to one shot. Um, uh, those kinds of little changes are changing the focus mark, you know, so. Um, those could be done, you know, very quickly between takes. And the advantage of having rehearsed and having great actors to begin with is performance-wise, we are getting great first takes. You know, first, second takes, as far as I'm concerned, performance-wise, done. We're good, ready to move on. Now, the actors may want their own coverage and close-ups. Everyone wants a close-up, you know. But... So what we would do is once we knew we had the performance in the can, we would say, okay, well then for subsequent takes, so it kind of drives the actors crazy a little bit because they're like, because Nancy's a real tweaker. She'll like run up, do this, do this, do this, you know, and then sit back down with me. Um, but a lot of times what we could do is uh, Josh, who was our first AC on one of the cameras, had a remote control control for the red. I don't know what it's called, but, you know, control focus and zoom and everything. Even sometimes during a take, I would whisper to him or or Nancy would whisper to him, you know, let's, you know, let's nudge in a little bit. Let's do a slow zoom here. We we did a fair number of slow zooms um, in the movie. And uh, and we could do that, you know, without the camera operators even knowing it um, in the middle of a shot. And, and they'd be like, hmm, what? Who? Oh, those guys. <laughs> you know? And um, but it was great. It was it was it was nice uh, to be able to do that, and to have that option. You know, part of it was that we shot on 4K, and we finished in 2K, which I don't really know what that means except four is bigger than two, and that's what counts. Because what that meant was that I knew that in post production we would be, we would have the option to zoom in, 
and basically keep have enough resolution to do that and we didn't realize i don't think we realized until we were into post really far into it how far we could go with it we could go about 175 percent which is a lot farther than we were originally told we could do it um, but what it meant was if you had a two shot you could zoom into a single if you had a four shot you could zoom into a two shot um, in post production so for for any take we were shooting with two cameras and two cameras meant not just two take or not just two usable takes but really four because you know with zooming in and zooming out in post you could really do a whole scene in just one take and it takes a while to kind of explain this to the actors and, and really and again we didn't realize how far we could take it until we really started working with the, the colorist and the you know and the post-production people but um, but it means you can get a lot of coverage very quickly uh, and, and again as long as your actors are good and they're doing the part and they're saying the lines right which they were so um, so that gave us a lot more opportunities in, in post-production you know I mean there's certain reasons you don't want to do that but for the most part, it gives you a lot of, of, of options. Um, you know, and, th and then, as you mentioned, I mean, some of the scenes are so emotional that you can't do more than a couple takes. It just wears the actors out. And, and it's funny, sometimes the actors would be like, you know, I can't do it anymore. I've, you know, I've, I've, I'm crying in this scene, I'm crying, you know, or they lose their voice, you know. And then there's other times you're like, oh no, I want to do it again, I don't, you know. And so you don't always know how many takes you're going to get sometimes. But, I mean, these actors, they let it all out. I mean, there's every actor in here is crying at one point or another. We're all crying on set, you know. So, I mean, these are tough scenes to shoot. And a lot of them are long scenes. You know, we have one scene towards the end of the movie. It's actually, on paper, it was a 19-page scene. And we tried to do it once all the way through, which is not, for those who don't know, it's like a 19-minute scene, you know, something. Or actually, it's probably 15 minutes. But still, it's a long scene a lot of dialogue and we got through one take all the way through and everyone was like we can't do this again we you know we have to break it up into segments which we kind of knew we would ultimately do but we wanted to do kind of one dry run through and but I'll tell you footage from that original t long take is in the movie and a lot of it because then on then once we broke it up then all of a sudden the cameras were a little bit different so we use coverage from that first take, and, and it is you get something fresh from it. Of course, the, the cameras were bumping into actors. I mean, it was you know there's reasons you don't want to do a 19 minute long take, but and that was a handheld scene. You know, uh, there weren't uh, there wasn't there's not much handheld in the movie, but we kind of use it in very specific places. So, you know, what else? How many hours of footage did you get? Uh, I don't know, countless hours. Countless, of footage. Mm -hmm. yeah, a lot. And, and how painful was it to cut out certain scenes? Were there certain scenes that you really just didn't want to lose, but you knew that maybe they just, it didn't work in terms there of There aren't that many story? scenes, like full scenes that we cut out. I'm, you know, I, I just put the DVD together, and so there are some deleted scenes. I was like, oh yeah, I guess we did cut this. It's more like little sections, you know, little, you know, line, you know, there's lines, or chunks of scenes. Um, and I, there's nothing I feel that bad about except there's one scene that my wife and three kids are in as kind of background. And, um, but it just didn't quite work editing and pacing wise. And, but it's on the DVD extra, so I'm like, uh, they can watch that. You know? okay. um, but otherwise, the bigger regrets are the scenes that we didn't shoot. So... You know, on a movie like this, you know, when you say, okay, we've got to make the day, there's no coming back to these locations, you know. When, so there would be scenes that we, we would push to the next day and the next day, and then we, you're gone from that location. You can't go back. So th there were whole scenes that I didn't shoot that are in the script. I was just actually reading the script again last night, um, and I was like, oh, yeah, we didn't shoot that, did we? So that, you know, then you're like, okay, am I painting myself into a corner, you know? So part of it becomes about scheduling. Like you want to try to put the less crucial scenes, you know, at the end of the day. But then sometimes it leads to some really nice moments. Um, you know, there's one scene that as scripted, Cheryl goes upstairs and we had a, we had a, um, a steady count for the day specifically to get the shot to get to get her coming up the stairs down the hall closing the baby's door and then turning back around and we just 
didn't have the time to do it. And it was the end of the day. It was like 7.30 and we had to be out by 8 o'clock. You know, you get exactly 12 hours with the actors because you got your turnaround time. They have to be back the next morning. And so we had to improvise. You know, it was killing us, but we had to improvise the shot you know, with, a st- with a camera on sticks from the bottom of the stairs where we don't come up with her. She's basically, we lose her and then she comes in. But because we were kind of rushing to get that, we only had like two lights to use and it's this beautiful and it winds up being this beautiful silhouetted shot at the top of the balcony and it just and it's, and it's one of our favorite scenes you know mine and Nancy's and, and Melissa the actress who's in it and um, so sometimes you, you you get lucky you know you, you're forced by circumstance okay you have to cut this but what else can we do there's a couple other scenes specifically with Melissa and Julia that for whatever reason we're always scheduled at the end of the day and we were rushing and we had to rush those scenes. So instead of these elaborate, you know, two camera, da da da, and let's do four takes and tweak the lights and tweak the cameras, we're like, we're doing a one <laughs> Make it count. And they were such troopers about it, you know, the actresses, and, and could pull them off. Because again, they had been rehearsing by themselves a lot of these scenes. Um, and, there's, and there's a couple of these scenes in the kitchen, two scenes in the kitchen, one with a baby. Uh, the one scene in the kitchen particularly that instead of doing any camera movement, we're just racking from one to the other. So it's just the AC doing this, this, this. And it's a beautiful scene. It works perfectly. You know, I think we did like four or five takes to get the marks right. Once we got it, we're like, this is it. It's, it works as a one Let's make it work. You know, let's make it work. And it did. And it looks beautiful. And it's, uh, and people think I'm a genius for coming up with that scene, you know. But it's just because it was the end of the day. And didn't have time for a second camera. What did you learn about the time that it took to adjust the lighting? What were some of your regrets, or is it just there's there was no? Well, I think I think you, you learn how to manage that situation, which is to say, okay, so we're not going to worry about the lights. Let's worry about the camera. You know, um, in other words, you, you figure out, okay, every scene doesn't have to have complete cross coverage of you know headshot close up over the shoulder over this over that because every time you do that you have to change the lighting so instead like okay what can you shoot from kind of one kind of proscenium without changing the lights but knowing that your next scene is going to be this way you know so that you know from the audience perspective you, you're not thinking oh this i'm just watching a, you know like a play i mean there's plenty of this that feels like a play anyway but um but that uh it's because it's these overs that you know that, that really slow you down so there's way you just find ways of blocking the actors and, and blocking the, the the camera movement to kind of use the lights that are there without having to um completely relight um in the in the new york scenes we were able to use china balls um you know for a lot of the lighting and that helps speed things up in there so that you know, and then there were other lights too, but that that definitely sped things up a little bit in there. 